Gains just keep piling up in the stock market, over 4% in the Russell and NASDAQ's now going for a 2% rally. Bond yields down, dollar down. We've been talking about it all morning. Let's take a little break from the inflation discussion and talk about AI with Ben Wren. He's the founder and chief executive officer at SIG Tech, a financial services and technology firm that's working on some applications of artificial intelligence for investors. Ben, welcome back to the Schwab Network. Hey, Oliver, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back. Thank you. Uh, hey, doubt you guys are working on AI tech. I got an idea for an AI uh, financial model, Ben. If inflation comes in light, buy everything. What do you think? I think that's pretty clever. I think you're <laughs> outperforming the GBD4, Oliver. <laughs> so uh, undoubtedly, and we are navigating one of the most dynamic environments in investment, You know where the macro factors are having a very pronounced impact on the market. I think there's a famous saying that in economics, things take longer to happen than you think. And then when they happen, they happen faster than you thought they could. Mm. So uh, now we are leveraging AI technologies to make sense of the world, the complexities. So it's very interesting how fast things have moved since we spoke a few months ago. How are you guys doing? What is your main focus? Uh, you showed me a few of the prototypes you're working on several weeks ago, and it seemed pretty uh, uh, cool the way you were using some of the language models to uh, basically construct uh, portfolios and think about a um, a allocations, stuff like that. So last time we talked about like the state of art large language models. We can think of them as the state of art reasoning engines. But the latest development that we have been working on is so-called autonomous AI agents. So let me explain how this works. So think about a reasoning engine. There are two major limitations. One is the access to up-to-date data because all the AI models by construction is trained on a vast corpus of data. And the moment the training is finished, their knowledge is stopped being updated. So AI models always have a lack of access to the real-time live data that we have. The other thing that AI models lacks is the capabilities to crunch numbers. It's a bit like humans ourselves. We know how to do calculations, like to, we can do square root, we can do multiplications, but then we all need the calculators to actually crunch the numbers. So the AI models has to be able to use tools to be able to do specific tasks. Mm. So everything we spoke, um, especially following the major announcement by the OpenAI Developers Day last week, you know, now AI is able to A, access up-to-date data, and B, use tools by giving them these two sets of you know, new capabilities, we are creating so-called autonomous AI agents. These agents can execute tasks almost entirely autonomously as, as soon as we ask them. So we, it's like we're having a 24 access to a wide range of AI experts. So is it almost like we're getting to a set it and forget it type of uh, uh, interaction, whereas it used to be we have to kind of guide them through the specific tasks we want. Now we come up with a sort of system that they're supposed to follow. Press a button, they go. We can check in, see where they're at. I think AI agents, even if you call them autonomous, but actually it's still a very collaborative um, you know, very collaborative partner mm. for humans. So when we use these agents, we can constantly give them feedback. Think of them as like co-pilots or analysts that you can speak to. Mm. Especially today, you can speak to them whether you know using text or using voice. And I don't know whether you have tried it, but when you use the voice mode of the ChatGPT mobile applications, it actually really provides a real sense of presence, a real sense of connections. Now, we have, I have friends and colleagues who literally have like a multi-hour long intellectual discussions with GBT4 models is through these voice uh, applications. Mm. And then when we collaborate with these AI agents, you know, they constantly give us updates on what they are working on, what's the, what's the results of the, of the tasks they execute, and then we can actually give them feedback. You know, sometimes just like a partner, you know, they, you know when, when we think we want to direct them down a very, a slightly different path, we can do that. It's this collaborative, um, you know, work with AI agents who is constantly being improved based on the feedback we provide that makes them so useful. Talk to me about the lowest hanging fruit for investors and financial professionals, your client base that already comes to you for data tools that you provide, you're building out a chat GPT 
function uh, that looks like to some extent is available already. Uh, where is the most obvious utility found right now in uh, your research and your development using ChatGPT as an investor? Um, I think currently the, the complexity of the environment is quite unprecedented in recent memories. But don't forget the amount of analytical power as investors, whether you are retail or institutional, you can have access to today is also unprecedented. So let me just give mm -hmm. you a very concrete example. For example, the two major factors in macro today are geopolitics and inflation. So if you think about geopolitics, you know, if you are a very big fin financial institution, you are going to most likely hire an, ex an external political consultant. The political consultant is an expert, so she is going to produce you know, very nuanced opinions on the regional conflicts that we are seeing today, and also probably with very rich historical context. Now, not everyone can afford to hire a political consultant, but today we can pay $20 and ha have access to GPT-4. And by the way, GPT-4 is probably the number one most capable polymath across numerous, numerous domains in the world today. We can actually, by augment the GPT-4 models, like the tools we have built at SIGTAC, to give them access to up-to-date data and give them access to you know, number crunching capabilities. So suddenly, we can turn a large language models into different types of AI agents with different personas. We have access to 24-7 of AI political consultant, an AI economist, an AI financial analyst, and maybe an AI historian who may be able to give us less biased opinions on all sorts of events happening in our life. Yeah, so I think cool. for investors, have, having access to tools like this is you know, creating brand new possibilities. The key point there being the less biased interpretation of uh, you know, what a Cuban might give on some of those subjects. As far as like analyzing raw financial data, what right now can you do if I use your chat GPT tool you've been building I'm a portfolio manager. Uh, what can I get from that right now? Today, we actually, if you go to our website and you can use a plugin for free and you can have access to um, building portfolios of all the liquid futures market, single stocks, ETFs, you can build investment portfolio that's a long only, but also long short. And also you have access to hundreds of macro indicators, which you can actually um, immediate, immediately plot graphs and see the trends and help you to make better decisions. I think the most important thing is by combining the, you know, the reasoning capabilities of AI models, you can also do so-called scenario analysis. You can say, okay, what if this happens? How will that scenario, you know, potentially described by multiple macro factors, how will mm -hmm. that affect my portfolios today? So that this will help investors, you know, prepare for different possibilities, and hopefully your portfolio will be diverse enough to to be uh, to deal with the uncertainties we see today. So then, uh, in theory, I could have said before today, what if we hit, you know, zero month over month? And is is this a reasonable prompt? Could I have said something like, all right, if month over month CPI comes in flat, you know, how much is the Russell up? Is that something I could have typed in? You could have, um, Oliver, you could have typed in something like, say, before today, say yesterday, you could, you could have asked the model, say, when was the last time that CPI came in that's a bit softer than consensus? And when that happened, tell me how the market reacted on the day or the days afterwards. And then you have a pretty good idea about kind of the patterns that happened historically, and that may, might have helped you make certain decisions. Very cool. Wow, sounds like uh, what we've got already would have made my job a lot easier as a stock reporter uh, some years ago. <laughs> uh, all right, Ben, very cool update, uh, and we'll, we'll certainly stay in touch. Uh, thanks for the heads up on what's being built down, what's possible. Thank you, Oliver. It's a pleasure. All right. Likewise, Ben Wren, founder and chief executive officer at Sig Tech. All right. That's cool. Definitely some cool stuff being built. And I was checking out the model on the site. It seems like there's already quite a bit of uh, functionality within it.